Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets. Now bringing down a bite-sized piece today. Got some fantastic news. First up, Kraken is now going to be a registered bank in the state of Wyoming. Why this is huge, why this is going to change everything, and why I'm going to be changing my banks quickly. Also, this is a follow-up from yesterday's video, but we're going to talk about MicroStrategy outperforms the NASDAQ Composite after a 175 million Bitcoin purchase is made. This is on top of their 250 million Bitcoin that they already purchased and what actually happened to their stock, which in my opinion is more of a bullish story than them actually buying the Bitcoin. Also, we're going to talk about Chainlink to start supplying data for Crypto.com's DeFi wallet, which will lead us into question of the day where we answer the question, which is, how do I buy Theta? So we'll get to all that, but let's take a look at what's going on with the market. So today, September 16th, about 10 a.m. Texas time, and it looks like Bitcoin finally broke above that 11,000, or at least back above 11,000. So I'm happy with that. 2.6 for 24 hours and 9% for the seven day. I will take those numbers. Ethereum, uh, almost at 370, 375 at 1.5 and 10% up for the week. Not too shabby as far as gains. Those are the kind of gains you might see in DeFi, but here they are in Ethereum. We'll take it. Tether's Tether, nobody cares. XRP, 24 cents. Pretty much you've got two stable coins in number three and four. Polkadot down 2%, but up 20% for the week, so not too bad. Bitcoin Cash down 0.1, but they're in that sixth spot. And we'll see what happens with that whole Bitcoin Cash hard fork coming up in November. Chainlink down 4.5, even though they've, they've got good news. What are you going to do? Binance down 1.4, even though they got into DeFi. Also, what are you going to do? Crypto.com only at 0.4, even though they got into DeFi. That's how it is. DeFi is not as uh, hot as it used to be, but I believe it has its place. And everything else is pretty much standard, except for urine finance, down 10% for the day. Ouchie. 35,000, though, per token. Uh, if you're a uh, urine finance token holder and you got an early, congratulations. But uh, I'm not touching that. And down we go. Synthetics down 1.5. Theta down 3%. What are you going to do? 28% for the week. Not too bad. And uh, 51 cents. And I've always said uh, anything below a dollar is a steal. And we're going to talk about how to buy that. But let's jump into the day's top story. So first up, and this was huge. I was just about to make a video. And I got this email from Kraken. And I just happened to open it up. And what does it say? Oh, it's says, hey, guess what? We're going to be a bank. And it states, we are thrilled to announce that the state of Wyoming has approved Kraken's application to form the world's first special purpose depository institute, or SBTI. I have no idea what that is, but sounds good. And has granted a charter to Wyoming's newest state chartered bank, tentatively called Kraken Financial. I know what that means. That means that Kraken is going to be its own bank. It's going to be able to have traditional fiat. You're going to have cryptocurrency. You're going to be able to do wires, ACH, all those types of things. And this is exciting news because this is one of the first to where an exchange is also going to be a bank. And you have to do, a, and you're going to be able to do a lot of things that we should have already been able to do. So thank you, Wyoming, for being one of the few states to actually get it. New York, I hope you're listening because this is how it's done. So. Headquartered in Cheyenne, Wyoming, Kraken Financial will enable Kraken clients in the U.S., unfortunately, to bank seamlessly between digital assets and national currencies. Notice I didn't say U.S. dollar. They said national currencies. So I use Revolut, and uh, they're a pretty great bank. They were started in Europe, and now they transferred over to America, and you're able to uh, transact in different national currencies. So like for me, I live right next to Mexico. I can transfer the US dollar right to the peso, just like that, at a snap of a button. Very fast, very easy to use. Now Kraken's been able to do that, and that is good stuff. And it lays it all out, from paying bills and receiving salaries in crypto to incorporating digital assets into investment and trading portfolios. Kraken Financial will be the first regulated U.S. bank to provide comprehensive deposit-taking custody and fiduciary services for digital assets. And then scrolling down, additionally, because of our position as a bridge between crypto and traditional finance, we will offer the following crypto-focused services in our first year of operations. So digital asset custody, demand deposit accounts, DDAs, wire transfer, and funding services. And here's the big one. Other services for individuals accounts, a complete online and mobile banking suite of products, which includes a debit card that clients can use to spend their crypto funds. So this is one of those things that crypto.com actually had on everything and everybody. And they were like way out of the curve. Now Kraken is catching up. And this is just one of those dominoes that falls. I think over the next one to three years, you're going to see a lot of banks going, hey, wait, what happened? 
Where's all our customers going? Uh, we're going to have to close another branch because no one's coming in. Maybe this is the wake-up call that the OCC said is, hey, you guys can custody this stuff if you stop dragging your feet. And I think they're going to look around and going, hmm, seems like a ghost town here. Maybe we should get into cryptocurrency. Let me know what you think in the comment section. I think this is huge. Let me know. Let's move on. Next up, I wanted to slip this in because we have to take a look at a global macro perspective about what's going on around us. There's this question that was asked, um, what do I think is going to happen in the next year to three years uh, as far as like cryptocurrency? And I said, well, I think there's going to be a big dip uh, because in the traditional market, there are institutional investors and institutional investors are also uh, making their way into our market. And the problem with the traditional world is that there's things like this going on where people are going bankrupt. People are seeking federal bailouts. There are printing of money. And I think there's a bubble that's about to pop. And when that bubble pops, you're going to see some of those players, not all, but some of those players go, you know what? I need to be liquid. I need to pay off my debts. And the only thing that's open 24 seven is cryptocurrency. And they're going to pull that out. Out. But the strong hands, the ones that know exactly where this is going, and there's a lot more of those institutional investors that see where things are going, they're going to keep their money in. So we're going to see a little bit of a dip, and it's going to take off like a rocket because they're going to say, you know what, we can't trust this fiat, this uh, this Federal Reserve, this uh, US dollar. I think we should go into something that has a quantitative hardening, not a quantitative easing. And that is cryptocurrencies and digital assets. So this is what I see uh, just looking at the big picture. So struggling hotel owners, uh, some with Trump ties seek federal ballot. I don't care about the Trump ties. What I really care about is that there are multi-billion dollar hotel chains that are going to default in their loans. And that's going to have a ripple effect. So Thomas J. Barrick Jr., billionaire investor, has struggled to keep up with payment of almost $2 billion in Wall Street debt. He used to buy a collection of more than 160 hotels. Monty Bennett, is in a similar tough spot after he recently halted payments owed on the 2.6 billion worth of Wall Street debt used to acquire his own hotel collection. And there's a term called Im imminent monetary default is a term a Wall Street research firm used this summer to describe more than 300 million in debt on a luxury hotel in Austin controlled by Doug Manchester. So of course, this is all related to COVID-19. People are traveling less. They don't need hotels. What happens to hotels? They start to close down or they start to default on their loans. Now the bank's like, well, I'm not getting any money. So what do we do? Well, we had a bailout. We're going to need another bailout. And then guess what's going to happen? We need another bailout and another bailout. And now all of a sudden you have so many hands out. There's only so much money you can print before you're just like, you know what? You guys have to figure it out yourself. And uh, I know some people say, no, no, no. Uh, modern, modern monetary theory. We can print... Uh, to oblivion and it won't matter. Well, I'm here to tell you, there is a point when you just can't do that anymore. And I think that we are coming up to that, that point. So uh, this is what I see in the macro uh, view. Let me know what you think in the comment section. But again, I don't see this as a very positive outlook in the short term. Long term, this is great for cryptocurrency digital assets because the more uncertainty, the better it is for us. Let's move on. Next up, we already covered this, but I wanted to uh, make one point. MicroStrategy outperforms the NASDAQ after 175 million Bitcoin purchase. So what's going on here? So if you're unfamiliar with MicroStrategy, not too long ago, this little billion dollar company, they bought 21,000 plus Bitcoin in August of 2020, this year. And that was about 250 million. They now own 0.1% of all Bitcoin. With this new purchase, they probably own 0 02 The CEO stated that Bitcoin is digital gold, harder, stronger, faster, and smarter than any money that has ever preceded it, which is a vast difference to what he said in 2013, where he said that Bitcoin is dead. Amazing what seven years will do. And uh, I think this is exactly what's going to happen with a lot of people out there. They're going to you know, just talk about Bitcoin like it's just nerd money and it's never going to work to all of a sudden you see big, huge players like MicroStrategy like a Paul Tudor Jones, like a Fidelity, like a TD Ameritrade, and the list goes on and on and on. So this is what's happening. So what happened recently, MicroStrategy bought another 175 million in Bitcoin. And what happened when they did that was that their stock rose over 9% as the CEO revealed what had happened. So what this says to me is that it's not just the CEO that thinks this is a good idea. 
It's the shareholders who say, you know what? This is great for us. This is great for the company. And we believe in cryptocurrency. Maybe they're opening their eyes like everybody else out there. So I think when you can increase your percentage, your stock price by 9% by buying in a Bitcoin, you got a lot of believers than just upper management. Anyhow, moving down. This is uh, Michael Saylor. He's the CEO. And just to verify, he states, on September 14th, MicroStrategy completed its acquisition of almost 17,000 additional Bitcoins at a price of $175 million. To date, we have purchased over 38,000 Bitcoins at a purchase price of $425 million, inclusive of fees and expenses. And there's two things to note here. So MicroStrategy's move seemed to have pleased market participants like we just talked about. While the company's stock jumped over 9%, the Nasdaq composite set at just over 1% gain. So they are beating out Nasdaq. And lastly, MicroStrategy intention was capital preservation with company CEO Michael Saylor saying of their first Bitcoin bet, the cryptocurrency was, get this, a dependable store of value and an attractive investment asset with more long-term appreciation potential than holding cash, which only makes sense. Cash will have inflation and will decrease by 2%, or inflation will cause 2%, which decreases the purchasing power. And with Bitcoin, it goes the exact opposite way. So my question to you is, which one would you rather have in the bank? Let me know think in the comments section. Let's move on. Last up, before we get to Q of the day, Chainlink to start supplying data for Crypto.com's DeFi wallet. So what's going on here? Well, the Hong Kong-based payment card and wallet provider said Monday that Chainlink's price reference data or its decentralized Oracle network had been plugged directly into the DeFi wallet, giving users ready access to its price feeds. Per a press release, Crypto.com said the integration meant users would receive highly accurate and transparent prices on all assets supporting the wallet. Chainlink co-founder Sergey Nazarov said the integration means the price, the prices users will see will reflect actual market conditions rather than being the product of human tampering. That's what's great about um, Chainlink is that they actually have multiple oracles to get different price feeds. So they don't, you don't just have one little piece and which is, which is susceptible to attack. So multiple different points of references, that's great to get the most accurate data. And then mirroring Binance, Crypto.com launched a swap product last week where users can exchange tokens and where liquidity providers can earn yields by depositing digital assets into token pools. So again, it seems like whatever is happening in the space, the exchanges kind of just follow suit. Like, oh, you like that Uniswap? Well, guess what? Binance has got it. Crypto.com's got it. And guess who else is getting the DeFi game? Coinbase has got it. Well, they have Wi-Fi and they have UMA, which is which are uh, decentralized finance products. So uh, we'll see how that all works out for them. But just to make sure that this partnership was accurate, I went to Crypto.com, the official website, and I scrolled all the way down to the blog. And when the blog came, comes up, I just went and take a look at all their different... Um, uh, products and uh, information that they have. And it looks like on the third row, Crypto, Chainlink, DeFi, Crypto.com successfully integrates Chainlink to power ambitious DeFi roadmap for CRO. And if you click on that, you can go through the whole thing. So this, to my mind, would be what would be called a partnership. Uh, it looks like Crypto.com is definitely using Chainlink. So maybe it is not a hoax and a scam and a fraud like people may have said it is. So let me know what you think in the comment section. That's what I see unless I'm missing something. All right. And speaking of other things that you can buy on exchanges and whatnot, there was a question I got, which was all about Theta and how to buy it. So let's jump into the office. All right, everybody. Welcome back to Q of the day. Welcome back to the office. So uh, the Q of the day is actually a question we have answered uh, in the past, uh, but I need to answer this question again because it keeps coming up. And the question is, where can I buy Theta? Now, I was talking about uh, Theta in the last two videos and I kept getting a lot of comments like, hey, I'm in Texas working on by Theta. Hey, I'm in this country working on by Theta. So uh, I'd already done a video on how to buy Theta, which is a, uh, for Uniswap. Uh, you can watch that. I'll link that at the end. Um, but what I need to do is actually show you a, another way. I was, I was conversing with uh, uh, Digital Dave over at Crazy for Cryptos. And he said, hey, I saw your video on uh, Theta. Have you ever used my exchange? I said, as a matter of fact, I did use your exchange and I used it to buy Theta and it worked out pretty well, very easy. 
He said, well, mention it to your subscribers if you could. I said, that's a good idea. So uh, I need to show you uh, how to buy Theta using Digital Dave's Exchange. And uh, it's a pretty simple process, almost as easy as Uniswap. The difference is, is that uh, they are a brokerage, kind of like Voyager, and they find you the best rates uh, for to purchase uh, Theta and get it that way. So it's a, like I said, it's a very simplified process. And what I need to do is make sure that I, I do these videos and then put them in the playlist so that people can actually find them later on instead of just always asking in the comment section. And this is one of those, those issues with, with, with YouTube where it's kind of hard to make an education part uh, very comprehensive if you, you know, don't have uh, places to like direct people to because you just say, well, then you have to look through all the different uh, videos and whatnot. Uh, that's why I need to finish up that website. So all the information is right there. So what I'm gonna do right now is let's jump into my computer and I'm gonna show you exactly how to buy Theta using Digital Dave's Exchange. Uh, very simplified process, let's just do that. So first of all, the original video that I did was how to buy Theta step by step. And it goes over the Uniswap and how to set up your Theta wallet. So I'm gonna link that right now at the very top. It's gonna slide out, so take a look at that first because that's what you're gonna need to figure out how to actually get your wallet in place. And all you gotta do is go to thetatoken.org and that will be in the description. And if you just click on wallet uh, and just follow the directions in the, in the other video that we just shared, you should have no problem. But the big question then is, how do we use Crazy for Crypto's exchange? Well, first of all, I'm just going to link it in the description as well, crazyforcryptos.com and forward slash exchange. So it works pretty much like Uniswap. It's just that uh, sometimes you get uh, some better rates. It just depends on what you want to use. So right here, and there's a lot of different ones you can go through, right? Depending on what you're going to use, you're going to want to send something for something, right? So let's use, let's see something real quick. Can I use Ada? Yeah, so all you gotta do, when, when you first put it in here, it says the popular choices are Bitcoin, Ethereum, USDT, but you can use anything that you really want to. They got Cardano, they got Theta, they got Synthetics. Let's see, they got, they got Tron. I mean, pretty much everything you think of is right there. Not everything, but a lot of them. To make this very simple, I'm just gonna use Bitcoin. And what we're gonna want is you get, let's go for Theta. So Theta's about 50 cents right now. So I don't want 21,000. I just want to get about 100 of them or so. So I usually just play around with it until I get figure it out. So 0 0.001, that's 21. 0 0.009, that's going to give me 191. Or I'll always make an even Steven and go 0 0.010 and 209. Okay, somewhere around there sounds good. And again, I just play around with it until I figure it out. And uh, that's what we got. So then we're going to click on exchange. And then just to be crystal clear, uh, this is on Crazy for Crypto's website, but what he did is he embedded this exchange. It's not like Dave created it, which would be very good if he could, but uh, it looks like it is a, a, a embed and it's an actually from Change Now. So we're going to click on Exchange, which is going to take us to the regular uh, exchange itself, which is Change Now. And it's pretty simple. So, I mean, what they do, uh, Change Now is just like uh, Voyager in the sense that it is a brokerage. So it's going to look for the best rate that it can find, kind of like how Hotels.com at Ag all the different hotels and finds the best hotel and then uh, off you go so same type of thing here so we're gonna go for 0 0.01 gonna get about 200 theta uh, rough, roughly about 50 cents right now and what's gonna ask right here for is they're looking for the theta payout address so what we need to do is go to the theta our theta wallet which we can simply just uh, click on go to thetatoken.org on our wallet and again you just if you watch the video that i had done previously it'll show you how to set this all up it's very simple actually and then what it's going to ask you for is your key store file and your wallet or i'm sorry your password so the key store file of course i have saved that on my desktop i'll just load that up and it's just this little file that it gives you after you set it up it's going to ask us for a password sure and we're going to click on un unlock wallet now there's a lot of different ways to unlock your wallet there's the mnemonic phrase the private key or the hardware this is just the easiest way for me it's up to you how you want to unlock it and we go over that in the video and there we are so here is my theta wallet i got a whopping 2500 not too shabby and what i want to do is i don't want to send any of course i want to receive theta so i'm going to click on receive and this is my handy dandy wallet so i'm going to copy address has been copied and what i try to do is i try to remember like like the first four and the last four somewhere around there so 0x93 uh, 082e so i'm going to go back to the actual exchange and i'm going to copy and paste and 082e and the first ones were 0x93 so that looks good so i'm going to click next so here's the details i'm going to send 0 0.01 bitcoin and i'm going to try to get or i'm going to get excuse me 209 theta that's going to take about 10 minutes we will see so what i need to do is i want to click 
con confirm. And here's where all the magic happens. This is the easy part. So all this, all this asking for is like, this is where you need to send your Bitcoin. And when I first did this myself, I was like, eesh, I don't know. But I've done this actually two or three times. Uh, no problem so far. It seems to be very accurate, uh, very quick. And then off you go. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my Celsius wallet. And this has for the two-factor authentication. So I'm going to go to that app, which looks like that. And I'm going to find Celsius. Copy that. Come over here, click paste. So I'm going to click on Bitcoin, and here is my Bitcoin account. So what I want to do is I want to withdraw. So I'm going to click on that right button there, withdraw. So the amount I've got is 0 .01, 0 0.01, which is about $110. Okay. I'm going to click on check wallet address. So I could do two, one of two things. I could put in the withdraw address, which is 3PZCUHM, blah, 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 which I don't want to do because it's a lot of work. And if I had to do that, you know, multiple times a day, it's not going to happen. But underneath there, it says scan QR code. And that's the great thing about when you have a desktop app and you're using your phone. You're just going to click on scan QR code. And then what you're going to look for is the actual QR code, which is right there. And there it is. And what I want to do is I always want to verify it. So the first three or three or four, three PZC, three PZC, the last uh, four KB1Y, KB1Y. It looks pretty good. I could verify the whole thing, but it looks uh, legitimate. So let's scroll down and click on confirm withdrawal. Three PZC, KB1Y looks good. Confirm. It's going to ask me again for the two factor authentication. I'm going to go back, find Celsius, let it run out. 297013 and paste. You're about to draw $110. Send email verification. Yes. So this seems like a real pain when you're going through it, you know, because there's always different steps, but it is for security. It is for your own good. So sure, I will let that happen. So now I'm going to go do is go back into my email account and just look for that email so I can confirm this and confirm withdrawal request. I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to confirm that just to make sure I'll click on this, just to make sure. Withdrawal confirmed. So a lot of different steps, a lot of security. That's okay. I'm okay with that. So now we do have two options. We can do one of two things. We can sit around and wait for this to confirm, exchange, and send to you. And then we can check our Theta wallet, or we can just put our email address in here. Dan Digital Asset News at gmail.com. Gmail. And it'll let us know when it is actually done. For right now, let's just wait a little bit and we'll come back. So just real quick, I wanna talk about how fast this actually was. So it was 4.22 p.m. when the withdrawal request came through and it was 4.28 when the withdrawal request was actually completed. So, I mean, the six minutes is a uh, pretty fantastic time work. I will uh, be happy about that. Now, one, one thing I wanna jump back on and it's about uh, locking your address. And this, there's just some uh, information here it says right here, if this is your first withdrawal, this will become your locked withdrawal address. You can change this address through the app, press here to learn more about it. So when I click on that, it takes me to this little FAQ section and it says your withdrawal address gets locked for 24 hours after your first use. The security feature was implemented so in case somebody gets got access to your account, they couldn't withdraw your coins right away if they didn't whitelist your withdrawal addresses. However, if you have 2FA or two-factor authentication activated in your account, which I do, your withdrawal address will not get locked after the first year's use. However, if you initiate a withdrawal address change, it will get locked for 24 hours once you confirm the change via email. So I just wanna make that very crystal clear because people like to just throw out that scam word all of a sudden, like scam, it wouldn't let me withdraw my Bitcoin. It's ridiculous, I can't believe this, blah, blah. Calm down, it's okay, it's a security feature. So anyhow, looking over this, it says, yeah, your, ex your exchange took six minutes. Thank you for using change now, no problem. Leave this review, maybe later. Let's take a look at our Theta account. And there we are, 209 fresh Theta into our account just four minutes ago. Fantastic. All right, so that's it. So now you have options. You have Simple Swap, or you have the Crazy for Crypto has changed now. Whichever one you want to use or feel more comfortable with, those are the ones to do. All right, let's jump back. All right, so that's it for today. Uh, that Thanks for sticking with me through the very end of the video. I really appreciate that. That's amazing. Uh, also, if you don't know, there's a Join Now tab at the bottom right-hand corner, and um, you don't get anything special. It's just like a buck ninety-nine, like a tip. And uh, what I do is just give random shout-outs. So random shout-outs to Dominance Logistics. That's a good one. Justin Ross, Arky Garcia, Jorge Alba, Chuck C., 
David Sontang, Chris Alexander, and Rama Flash. So thanks so much for joining up. Really appreciate that. If you like these types of videos, there's gonna be two more that's gonna pop up on your left and right. And I'm going to link the Theta video on one of these. And that is going to take you to the Dan Clips, which is just a, um, a shorter version of the primary channel Digital Asset News. It's just the clips to break down the very you know basics of it to save you time. So I'll put that in and that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching. See you on the next one.